Hi, welcome to the Foster Swift Legal Basics video series. My name is Laura Genovich and I'm an attorney in the firm's Grand Rapids office. One of my specialties is representing public bodies like schools and municipalities. And an issue that comes up a lot for our clients is Michigan's Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA. Today I'm going to talk about three things that schools should know about FOIA. The first thing is that schools need to know how to recognize a FOIA request. A FOIA request that is subject to the statute is any written request for a public record. A request does not have to say FOIA on it, and a school cannot require that a FOIA request be made on a particular form. Rather, it's any written request. So that means that an oral request, somebody coming to the school office and just asking for a public record, would not likely fall under the FOIA statute. But a request also doesn't have to be sent in the mail. A written request can be made by email or fax. And if a written request does fall under the FOIA statute, then there are a lot of requirements, including very time-sensitive requirements, that the school has to comply with. So if there's any uncertainty about whether a request for public records does fall under FOIA, the school should consult with its attorney. The second thing the school should know about FOIA is what counts as a public record. A public record is going to include a lot of documents, but not just the kind that you typically put in a file. It doesn't necessarily mean pieces of paper. A public record can also include things like emails and text messages. So a FOIA request that you might see might call for any communications between school board members, perhaps about a controversial issue. Those documents, even if they are in the form of email or text messages, might be considered a public record. And again, this is an issue where if there's a question about what counts as a public record, you'll want to get some guidance so that you can be sure to comply with the statute. Now, a personal email of a board member that happens to be on the school's email system might not be considered a public record, depending on the context. So that's another issue where it needs to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. The third thing that schools should know about FOIA is what has to be produced in response to a FOIA request. When a FOIA request is received, the school can grant the request, deny the request, or grant parts of it and deny others. And a situation where that might come up is where parts of the public records requested are exempt from disclosure under the statute. There's a lot of situations where public records could be exempt from disclosure, and it goes beyond the scope of this uh, video. But one big one for schools, and unique to schools, is public records that fall under the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, or FERPA, which protects students' education records. So if the FOIA request is from someone other than a parent, the school needs to consider whether FERPA protects those uh, student education records from disclosure. One of the things we do a lot here at Foster Swift is review these FOIA requests, determine whether the request should be granted or denied, determine whether an extension is appropriate, and then actually go through the public records with our client to see what is exempt from disclosure and what needs to be provided in response to a FOIA request. If you have any questions about the FOIA or how we might be of assistance to you, please feel free to give me a call and my contact information will be on the screen.